Hey there, listeners. Well, welcome to the Ask Dennis episode. I'm actually uh, traveling at the moment and sitting here in an air, airport lounge, getting ready to get on my flight. And I've been reflecting on some of the work that I've been doing over the last few weeks with leaders and uh, in particular how I'm noticing that they are overwhelmed and just running from email to email, meeting to meeting. And that's part of the actual introductions to this podcast. But you know what? I think it's really important for them to take time out to pause, to lead, think first, and then lead better going forward. So let's discuss. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Hey there, listeners. Welcome to the Ask Dennis episode. This is a freestyle episode where I'm asked a question by our listeners or I share my thoughts and experiences and insights from working with many leaders around the globe. Hey, great to have you here with me. And uh, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic here. And, and the, the title is Pause to Lead, Think First, Lead Better. Well, are you taking time out to think? Are you taking time out to just to pause and think about things no matter what is happening around you? I'm not sure people are. I'm finding that a lot of them have a lot of things happening for them. They always seem to be busy. In fact, there's a lot of noise out there that's either distracting them or they are making the noise themselves. They tend to be overwhelmed, and I'm seeing leaders... No, this is not all leaders, right? This is some of the leaders I'm seeing, but it seems to be increasing in numbers that they're overwhelmed. And my question to you is, is this you? Are you like this? Are you experiencing some of the things I've just talked about? Are you in that reactive mode whereby you are reacting to things rather than being proactive? Interesting, because for some leaders, when they're like that, when there is an issue or a crisis or something happening, they tend to go in head first and uh, don't start thinking about what's going on or even thinking about solutions. So do you take time out to think? That's really the question. And when you do, and if you do, how do you do it? That's another question. The other one is, or are you that person that sort of tends to wing it and tries to, oh, well, we'll just see what happens, what comes up and things like that. For a lot of it around, do you take time out to think? Are you actually taking control? There are a lot of things that are out of our control, and I get that, and I understand that, but there's a whole lot of stuff that's in our control. Number one is our attitude and the way we react to things, and number two is our direction where we're going next. Now, I talk about this analogy, and it's a bit like the tail wagging the dog or the dog wagging the tail. And what do I mean by this is that when it's out of control, or you feel like you're out of control, or there's a lot of things happening, You could be spinning on many plates. You could be spinning or juggling a whole lot of balls, but something's going to drop. Something's going to drop through the cracks. Now, I'm not saying you have to be perfect, not saying that at all. But then what are you doing on a daily basis to help you be successful? Do you plan and do you take time out? And do you do it once and then do nothing for several days or a week or two? And then you start to spin again and you think, oh, I've got to get into my actual thinking and start to plan and things like that. So then you pay that some more attention as well. Oh, well, everyone's different, right? And everyone goes through different things, which is interesting. When an emergency crews get to a crash site or a house on fire or someone having a, a health issue, you tend to find that they won't run to the actual scene. They will actually get out slowly. And when I say slowly, as quickly as they can, They gather their gear and they walk to the actual scenario, situation, or the scene on where something is actually happening. Now, why why do they do this? Well, first of all, they don't want another patient, right? They don't want someone to fall over and they have an issue. Number two is that they don't actually, well, they actually want to show confidence. And they do that by going to something. They're assessing things, what's going on. They're asking questions. And they're actually coming across as being very confident. What I have found for myself and other leaders that I have worked with in uh, workshops or I have coached as well, what I have found, now you need to find what works for you, right? So that's going to be a key that I will caveat that I want to say there. 
But what I've found is that I've put in certain things that have actually helped me and I've actually helped others to do the thinking and putting things in place. Number one would be, first of all, make a decision to actually put time aside to plan and to think. You actually have to be deliberate in actually making that decision. You have to put that into your calendar or hold yourself accountable to making sure that you're actually going to do it. But it all comes down to a decision. A lot of this stuff is very much like going to the gym. Very easy just to push it to the side, I'll go later, and then later never happens. And so you have to be deliberate around it, but also you need to understand what is the frequency, how often are you going to do that? Number two would be for you to think about a structure or a format or an agenda on what you would like to do in your thinking session. Is it a whole lot of stuff that you're needing to think about, or is there certain areas you want to focus on, or is there maybe a certain structure, format that you do? For my executive coaching clients, I actually share a model, and it's called the Success Hour model, and I also actually have a planner for them as well, and so we actually help them do that, which is pretty interesting to see the results that they get. The third one is, how will you capture the items that you're thinking about and, and, and coming up with? Are you using a sketchbook? And I talk about either an A3 size or an A4 size sketchbook for you to do art, pictures, words, numbers. What is the right thing for you to help you think, but for you to capture the certain things as well? So are you using that or are you using a tablet or are you using voice to record things? Everyone is different. But I would say to you, please don't do it on a pieces of paper that are loose because someone cleans your office or you clean your office or it gets blown in the wind, or they just tend to get lost. But if you can put it into a dedicated book or a dedicated tablet that you might have, that will actually help. The fourth one would be for you to start thinking about what areas uh, you want to work on. Don't try and spin too many plates or juggle too many balls or try and do everything at once because it ain't going to work. And I think the thing here is that if you're trying to be everything to everybody and if you're trying to do everything, then it ain't going to work. So I would like you to be a little bit more selective. That's what I found. I found that if I'm a little bit more selective on what some certain things are, priorities might be, I can work those out, but I can work out and think about, okay, this one I need to do, this one I need to do, and it actually it really helps. Because the next point I wanted to make, which is number five, is really focus on three to five things per day. And I tend to call them the must, must do today list, but it's actually think about three to five things that you want to focus on. Why am I focusing on three and five? For a lot of you who hear me speak in other episodes, but also in my workshops and so forth, I talk about the power of three. Traffic lights have tend to have three colors. They don't tend to have 21. We want to keep it simple. So I'm giving you a little bit of a stretch there, going from three to five areas you might want to focus on. Number six is block out time. Not the thinking time, but in the thinking time, things that you're going to come up with. Go to your calendar and block out times for you to work on it during the week. Very important. Otherwise, you won't get it done and you won't have any focus on it because what you focus on is what gets done. And the seventh point here would be, I would actually give it a go depending on what you come up with, what's going to work for you, right? And reflect on it a few weeks down the track. So you, you tend to do it on a, several, um, on a regular basis, but reflect on it on a few weeks down the track to see is it working for you? Is there something you can tweak, you can change, uh, anything else you might need to adopt just to help you refine that whole process and what's right for you? You see, most successful people today have either got systems, processes, and procedures in place to help them be successful, and this is a process. You can create a system to help you do it. I always think there's three main key words when you're thinking about these. One is you having discipline to be disciplined to, to do it. And uh, the second thing would be for you to have focus on this area. And the third one is the consistency. If you can consistently do it, that's great. The sum of all those three words is really what I talk about being deliberate in what you're doing, right? And if you can be deliberate in taking up uh, and pausing to lead and think first, then you're going to lead better, way better than you are today. And it will go, your leadership will go to a new level but your organization, your customers, your stakeholders, everyone is going to feel a difference. Caution. There is a trap, and here is the trap. Because for some of you, you will do this, 
And it's a bit like poking it uh, with a stick. You're going to give it a go and see how it goes. But then you're going to get busy again. Then you're going to get distracted. There's going to be other noise. That's why I'm saying the deliberate side of being disciplined, focused, and consistent is what's going to really help you stay focused on what you're needing to do. Because you see, whatever is happening for you in life and in business, if you take time out to think and plan and put an action place plan in place and then take massive action, then that's actually going to help you. You see, all of this, you bring it all together, it's the key. It's the thing that's going to really help you move forward in whatever you're wanting to do. Well, I'm going to talk to you now about your call to action. There's actually two calls to action here. Well, number one would be for you to do this exercise I just talked about. And as I said earlier on, depending on how it works for you, or what you're wanting to do and how you're wanting to approach it. If you've got any questions around it, feel free to reach out to me in my email, dennis at leadingchangepartners.com. That'll be in the show notes. And then the other one would be on social media, private message. Happy to talk to you about that. Your second call to action is that in the show notes of this episode and in the other episodes, they have a link for you to click on which is to now download a 10 ways to lead in today's world. And it's more about an executive guide that is going to give you 10 themes. These are themes that are coming out of the interviews that I have done with leaders on the Leadership is Changing podcast. We are finding there's about 30 main themes. But of those 30, we've taken 10 of them and we've put in some strategic insights. In fact, there's 42 under the whole 10 of them. And you can now get that all in this guide. I'd love you to A, download it, but also I'd like you to think about how does it relate to you and what are some areas you might need to work on to help refine or to help grow your leadership skills and capabilities and experience so then you can lead, lead better as well. Hey, well, that's it for this episode. It's always a pleasure being with you. Thanks for joining me on the Leadership is Changing podcast. Until next time, bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world.